We've cooked with other people's dried steaks before, but today we dive headfirst into the dry aging game ourselves. I suppose it had to happen, this dry aging thing. You put a steak in a temperature controlled refrigerator type thing. For an extended period of time, it forms a crust, you cut the crust off. What you're left with is a steak that has been elevated in both flavor and the tenderness, and it's fabulous. But we've always just bought them already dry aged. That was until RestaurantSupply.com rung us up one day and said, lads, any interest in a dry ager? And we were like, yes, very nice of you. We would love that, thank you. They said, great, we'll arrange for one to come. Assuming they just send a little microwave And what did thing. we imagine? What did we imagine? We imagined that they would send like a dormitory fridge size that seems to be fairly popular. And a trucking company uh, rings up one day and they go, we've got this delivery to make. I go, great, let's do it at two o'clock on this day and two o'clock on this day comes and there's a knock at the door and there's a big truck and I walk out to see what's going on the guy puts the big gate up and there before us is this dry ager it's a refrigerator size beast so we figured out where to get it and, uh, and then once you get it going then you got to get something to put in it so I went down to a meat supplier that we use for the restaurants and I picked up a 19 pound bone-in prime ribeye. When they're that big, they're considered a primal cut. That's a steak, that's a primal cut. We put it in the dry ager and we've aged it for exactly 28 days. Today is the 28th day and a 28 day dried steak seems to be the most popular. The longer you do it, the more flavor, but funky flavor can be developed. So we thought we'd start our experiment at the traditional 28 day period. And at the end of 28 days, it looks like, um, well, it looks like, let me show you. Looks like this. So attractive, isn't it? We'll give it the little Vanna White turn. So what happens is it, it develops this crust on the outside. Inside though, should be gorgeous, perfect, beautifully flavored and tender ribeye. But there's only one problem. The bones are still in, but preventing me from just cutting beautiful steaks out of this is what's called the chine bone that runs across the back of the bones that you need a hacksaw for the butchers usually deal with and I don't have that. So, and I've never butchered a piece of meat before. So this is, it's gonna either be great or it's gonna be a shit show in a dumpster fire. But we have to start someplace. But before we do, let me say one thing. We thought we'd have a little fun today. We've planted a small Easter egg in this uh, video. And the first five people that uh, recognize it and comment about it will get what? How about that t-shirt? How about this t-shirt? We can give them this t-shirt, right? Perfect. That specific one that you're wearing? No, they will, they'll get a new one. Chancellor, very cute. Yes, we'll give you a Fat Means Flavor t-shirt. Okay, but now we've got to do this. And I honestly, I've had a conversation with a couple people about what to do to get the bone and the chine bone off and the whole deal. And I'm scared, honestly. So let's put some gloves on and get to it. All right, so a little look. Well, here we are. So here's this, along here is this chime. These are just the regular bones from this kid, right? So here's a bone. It would go through, like I might be able to cut all the way through this, but it would be a weird angle or something. Ugh, I don't really know. I don't really know. See, I want to just take a little piece off so you can get a sense of what we're going to be working with or what it's going to look like. So using what is not available yet, the Sam the Cooking Guy 10 and a half inch Kritsuki knife coming soon to a website near you. Just try and get a little slice off right here. Okay. Holy shit. You can get a sense of what's going to happen here, right? Look at that. That's what I'm looking at. Yeah. Look at that. So my friend Guga rightly refers to this part as the pellicles. He says it like this. Once you take off the outside of the aged ribeye you find the pellicles which are important to keep if you're making <laughs> i'm only kidding guga all right this is a problem it's a, a legitimate problem let me just try i might be able to get a cut right here max Let's see what we're doing okay okay don't buck up the knife oh it's giving a little bit yeah yeah okay this reveal right here is glorious so ready you think it's the most disgusting thing on the planet and then you cut it and you go boom Oh, 
Snizap, look at this inside. So beautifully marbled. I mean, it is a prime piece of beef, but that is something else. Prime piece of beef, that's what she said. That, did she really say that, Max? I just don't understand how this, this chine bone works in here. Like you can see, I couldn't cut, I'd have to zigzag around this and I don't know that that makes sense and I can't really. So actually, I'm not even sure if this belongs to this bone, this belongs to this, or this belongs to this. Okay, so here's what I think I might do now that we've got this gorgeous piece. All right, let me just set this off to the side for a sec. Here's what I think I want to do. I think I want to take my boning knife, which is sort of an okay one, not a great one, and cut here, right, and try and go like this. See what I've done here? I want to do this and remove that. So just leaving this beautiful part. So this is going to be a bit of a test. Oh boy. And I think you just get a, a towel here to keep it a little bit more steady. So now I take this and as close as I can to here, trying not to cut off his fingers, he said. No, see, I got a little resistance here. Like what the hell is, <clears throat> This is freaking great. I'm actually really liking this. I have to go this way though, guys. So what I don't want to do is I do not want to cut off too much of this really beautiful meat. Once I get down a little further, I'll be able to start to pull. Let's see if I can start to open it up a bit. You guys remember, uh, who's the butcher in the Brady Bunch? Hank the Butcher. I'm Hank the Butcher. You are. So, so I'm coming down to about here. I think this is a lot easier if you have a saw. Like a hack, well, I wouldn't need a hacksaw right now, but. Like an electric, like. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know one. how they do it. No. Why? I'll just end up dying. You're scared. I am scared. Do you remember the hatchet when you had to like break wood? Yes, I do. Oh my God. Let's show that clip right here. So I'm coming down to here. I think if I come up like this. Okay, this is actually sort of happening. Watch this move. Let me start to open this up. So I'll just continue to follow along. Staying as close to the bones as I can. I think I'm doing okay. Look, if this is not perfect, nobody get mad at me. It's my first time. I'm a novice. So I'm making it not a perfect thing, but we're gonna be all right, guys. Turning out much better than I like. By the way, we have something to put back in to the, uh, the dryer. Let me say thank you again to restaurantsupply.com and suggest next time if they sent a butcher along with the unit, <laughs> That would be fantastic. Okay, Max and Chance can tell you, if they spoke, how much I have been dreading this moment. He's been very scared. Because, I mean, look, I'm never getting a job in a uh, good steakhouse. At, oh, that, ladies and gentlemen, is kind of all she wrote. I believe we've done our work here. And now we can just cut a couple steaks. So here's the plan. Now what you do, because you don't want all this nasty outside business, right? Should we just cut ourselves a decent sized steak? So now with no bone to worry about, we are now just dealing with a 28 day dry aged prime ribeye. Holy snap. How exciting so is exciting! this? So exciting. So exciting. Stop it. Stop it. I okay. you needed something there. I did. So watch. Now this fat, right? This we can do this with. This fat we can now keep to render down. We've got enough fat here, but let's get rid of some of this. You don't need quite this much. And you see, you just trim away. Wow. That is really something. Okay. Here's my plan. We prep the steak for the oven. We're reverse searing. It's cooking at a low temperature. It cooks evenly, perfectly all the way through. Then we'll take it out. We'll sear it to get a gorgeous crust on the outside. And then we'll eat it with a little sauce that we'll make while it's, uh, while it's reverse searing. Let's wait and see how big this guy is just for posterity. Just posterity. Thank you, Max. Then it comes out. Then we sear, then we eat, then we're happy. We go home. Steak weighs. Almost a pound and a half. So I think that's a prime uh, ribeye like that would be about 30 bucks a pound. That's about a $45 steak. In a retail shop, in a restaurant, it's gotta be, I don't know, a, a lot, a beautiful steak. Okay, but here's what I like to do. I like a rack because I want the heat of the oven to get all the way around without the steak being just flat on the deck. So I'm gonna give it this. Of course, we're gonna use a little chosen avocado oil. I'm not looking for flavor at this point. I'm just looking for a little oil moisture to help the, the beautiful seasoning of kosher salt and pepper stick well, and a tiny bit of garlic powder. Now, remember when you see all the seasoning that goes on this, don't forget, this is, look, is that an inch and a half? I don't know what that is. Sorry, I do know what that is. That's uh, six inches. <laughs> it's an old stupid joke. It's an old, never mind, never mind. Forget it. Probably shouldn't even go in. Don't forget this outside part here. You never want to forget the edges. Boy, so let's say you have no intention ever of dry aging your own steaks. 
The lesson for today's video will be how to reverse sear, get a perfect steak, and you're going to be really happy. Really damn happy. I missed the end. Great, great, great. Okay. Now, how do we guarantee that it comes out at the temperature you want? I'm a proponent of using thermometers. Good instant read thermometer at the grill is an important thing. I'm using a probe one that will go in while it's cooking. We plug it in. We are going to set this to be ready at set temp. I want it to come out at 130 degrees. Cool. cool, cool. And then it's just going to get a quick blast in the pan. We'll bring it up a couple degrees. We'll be good. I want to measure the center of the steak. So here's what I do. I take my probe. I decide that's where I want it to end up. I put my fingers here and now I push in evenly right there and I stop when my fingers hit and it's set. This is going in the oven at 275 degrees. It's going to take about an hour ish, maybe a little bit more. In the meantime, we'll make the sauce and then it all happens. All right, we're almost there with the steak, but let's make a little dipping sauce. Looks like this. First in mayo. Gooch. I didn't mean gooch. It's a whole different thing. I meant goosh. Followed up by about the same amount of sour cream. Then a little Dijon. Mm, pretty much all I got. There you go. A little grainy mustard. Beautiful. And then a nice big fat spoonful of prepared horseradish, salt and pepper, and we mix. Oh Lord. Do you know how good that's going to be? Damn. A little more of this. Okay, it's gonna be fantastic. Sam the Cooking Guy 12 inch cast iron pan heating on the grill behind me because the steak, the beautifully aged uh, prime ribeye, is about to come off. I think I said 130, I'm gonna go 128. Just a little, uh, I, I wanna keep it a little bit more uh, beautiful pink inside, red inside, something like that. I think I can go get it and then we can do this and then we can do this and then we can do this and we can do this. And here we are. After, uh, I don't know, almost an hour, I pulled it at 128. And look, there's a school of thought that says, no, never put pepper on first, put it on after. Don't salt first, salt after. I say, F all of that, this is what I like to do. It's perfectly cooked inside. All it needs now is to be made beautiful looking. And we're gonna do that. We're gonna start by picking it up and putting some oil in the pan. Look at the smoke, thank you. I love that. And now, in goes our steak. And down we go. And we're gonna give it, I don't know, maybe a 30, 45 seconds aside. You just try and help it. It's just for color. Just for color. It's been what, 15 seconds? We're not trying to cook it through anymore. We've already done our best with that. So let's take a look at what we've got here. That is nice. So you see this black. That will be the people crying that the pepper's burnt and stuff. And I say to them, Fuck you people are crying because of pepper burnt. That's what I say to them. Yum. A few more seconds. Out she comes. All right. I'm happy. I say we yank it, cut it, and go to town. Oh, yeah. Mother may I. Come on, kids. Let's get happening. Snap. Gooch. All right. She's a beaut, I hope. She's a beaut. Come on, let's look at her. So this part here, this is called the rib cap. It's a super unctuous, really delicious part. Also known uh, in Latin as the spinalis dorsi. So I'll just do this. I'll just cut here. Did you just make up that spinalis no. dorsi thing? Spinalis dorsi is fully legit. Hi, yes, this particular part of the steak is called the spinalis dorsi. It's, th it's what? Discovered in 1899, the spinalis dorsi. So, stop talking. So there, look, there is a decent bit of fat here, but this bite, the rib cap bite, and see, look, at this is the, let me make this a bigger, a bigger example for you. If I cut like this, watch this. Do you see the wall to wall, end to end, beautiful pinkness with these little rivers of fat through it. That's what reverse searing does for you. So now we have a bite. I'll take a little bit of this Spinalis Dorsey and pop it in my old mouth. First bite of my very own dry aged ribeye. That's the shit that you pay a lot of money for in a steakhouse. And when you have a bite with a little bit of the fat, it's incredible. But look, this is the first video of 2022. Let's do a something little different right this second. Boys, come on and have a bite. I'll cut you a couple pieces. Look how perfect this is. Damn it. Yeah, hey boys, there's a couple beautiful pieces. Oh wait, here's our little sauce. Hold on. So here's a beautiful piece 
And if you didn't want to be a dick, Max, you could have some of these Spinalis Dorsey. The rib cap, which is super delicious. Here, I'll make it easy for you. I don't think spinach. There's Dorsey bice. Is you really just a stop thing. it here. It's a thing. I don't buy it. It's just a damn name, buddy. So here, grab up. Everybody, take a piece. Whatever piece you want. Look, these pieces. Here, go here. These are. If you want a spinalis. I want a spinalis. This, 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 this. This is yeah, spinalis. It's that not is. A yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. He's lying to you. So I, so I say you try it like this. Sauceless. Sauceless, and then, and then we have it with the sauce, yeah, right? Let's go. Well, if Max could ever get his shit. Trying to do some shit. The one Which time, one take? anyone the you want. You want Spinalis? No, it's not okay, a thing. It's a thing. All right, Happy New Year. Boys, happy New Year, everybody. everybody. Let's have another good year, everyone. Oh, shit. I mean, come on. Mm. Come Damn. on. And wait, do you taste burnt pepper? No. No, because that's a stupid... Midwives we're never buying too. a steak again. No, we're never buying a yeah, steak again. Oh, Wait. I didn't try the horseradish. No, now the horseradish. Yeah, yeah, that we have to do. After you. No, oh, after that's you. that's the bomb. Mm. The sauce. My mom so made horseradish sauce on Christmas. Mm. Is this better? Don't tell her. I won't. By the way. Shit, she might be watching. <laughs> By the way, I wanted to make a steak sandwich, and Max correctly pulled me from the brink and said, let's just make it about this. Oh. So we'll spend the next 20 minutes just eating, and wish you were here, sorry. Oh, and by the way, while this was uh, cooking in the oven, I nabbed the fat, cut all the, cut the outside, uh, the pellicles part off. I've got some beautiful fat here that I can render down and do some fun stuff with, and we'll, we'll do that at some point. <laughs> Look at... I can't stop. We're just going to just go and go and go and go. Cut against the grain, buddy. Mm -hmm. Always against the grain. All right, you guys. It's a new year, and we started off with uh, straight protein. Mm -hmm. Can't get mad at us for this. Almost forgot. I've got a 10-pound Wagyu ribeye, boneless. Make it easier for me. That we're going to put in, and we'll be able to track its progress all the way through. Huh? Huh? And by the way, for everyone who thought that the Easter egg was this square cutting board, oh, you're freaking wrong. Wait, so maybe you shouldn't have said that. We can, we can keep no, that that's out, fine. No, it's, it? it's just a red herring. Just oh, yeah, you know. because then people won't comment that. Yeah, yeah, I won't want to hear that like comment. I feel a lot of people will comment I didn't even that. think yeah, about will. this. This? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So I haven't so even mentioned we'll it. Keep that out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, but... Well, I can just say beautiful square cutting Chancy board. Chancey almost ruined everything. <laughs> but no, but wait, maybe they need to... I feel like a lot of people are going to think, oh, this No, is I it. think we leave it in. I think we leave the comment in. Because there's people sitting there right now going, I know what it is. It's a yeah. square cutting yeah, board. Yeah. And then they're going to see that. Thing. So this will fuck them up even more. But then they won't comment. Then they'll comment something well, they'll else. Something or they'll they'll have to watch comment. again. True. I know, but a bunch of wrong comments would be good. We, we can, we'll figure uh, okay. it out. Okay, all right. Okay, but can we just get a bite going here? 12. 12 2. 12 2. Where are you ready? Look, it's right here. On it with a sharpie? Yeah. You're not on the meat. But you're just gonna like put just, permanent marker on this? Remember how we do it over there? You just take that stuff off. As long as you think it'll come off. It comes off glass. Alright. Well, now you got me. I mean, uh, yeah, why would you even risk it? Here, look. 